In 2001, President Bush kicked off an initiative to launch 1,200 new community health centers. Meet one of the new guys in community health care. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Tidelands Bank, its new branch location in Merle's Inlet, off of Highway 17 Bypass South. We're focused on Hope Health, a community health center and an HIV and AIDS organization serving several counties. And we're visiting with its chief executive officer, Carl Humphreys. Good morning, Carl. Great, good to see you. Thanks for driving out early Thanks. this morning it's to get pleasure. here. My pleasure. My pleasure to this, be here. This great bank opening up letting us in an hour and a half before they actually open up today. It's a beautiful bank. It is a magnificent yeah. facility. Makes me want to do my banking business. Yeah, here. yeah. Come on, down to the, come on down to the beach instead of there in the Florence area. Of course, <laughs> we actually, a year ago, were filming at the new branch location for Tidelands Bank on this almost exact same week because the guest we had on yesterday, Bob Hendrick, who is the chairman of the 25th annual Merle's Inlet Boat Parade, their July 4th Boat Parade, mm -hmm. and Kathy Eustace, Reverend Kathy Eustace, tomorrow morning's guests were both on that same week oh. a year ago wow. at the new branch location for Tidelands Bank. So these guys we know are at least putting up new banks every year, That's if eight. not more often than that. And a lot of great things are happening, but we would want to get you in for a while, Carl. Yeah. You must stay busy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Been staying very busy lately. Yeah, a lot going yeah, on at Hope yeah. Health. I think you mentioned that A, y'all went through a, a name change, which was great to yeah, be more yeah. descriptive of what y'all do, and B, you've got a big new building. That's right. Coming yeah. online. That's right. Absolutely. We just closed on our building a uh, week and a half ago, and we're looking forward to doing some renovations in there and getting in there later this year. That is tremendous. You think you'll move, be moved in by the end of the year? Uh, my goal is November 1st, but right. if the construction company is watching today, he's going to say that's not possible. Yeah, that Humphreys, <laughs> get him off. Keep him in Merle's Inlet, yeah. I think mean, January 1st would probably be a realistic uh, target date. Is that right? That's, You're shooting for yeah. uh, the first of November. We can do it sooner. We'd love to do it. Yes, we're eager. Yes. We're very eager. We're, we're packed like sardines in our building now. We uh, have grown a lot over the past three or four years. And right and just have staff uh, packed into offices sharing and mm. it's uh, you know we're still doing a lot of good good things but we can do more once we get out into a bigger bigger place that's great real quick where are y'all now and where will y'all be yeah. let's say by the end of the year yes absolutely we're downtown Florence right now on Evans Street and uh, we will be moving over next, closer to McLeod right which we're excited about and it's on Palmetto Street there um, the old dialysis center there on Palmetto Street. It's Great. been vacant for a while, and we finally were able to secure the building and start the start the renovations. That is tremendous, Carl. Yes. That is tremendous. Well, yes. of course, there's still some folks who aren't familiar with Hope Health. Yes. Viewers in the PD and even possibly down here at the beach mm -hmm. who've never heard of Hope Health. Give us a little idea of what, to A, the aspect of being a community health center, mm -hmm. but B, what you all had, I think, founded back in the early 90s on as right. an HIV and AIDS service organization. That's right. We had some concerned citizens in Florence who got things started in 1991. That was well before my time in Florence, but uh, there wasn't a lot going on to help people with HIV and AIDS in our area, and these folks got together, and um, it was actually... Uh, in a living in a lady's living room, the night that Magic Johnson, this was a coincidence, but the the night Magic Johnson announced to the world that he was HIV positive, this group was meeting in this lady's wow. living room to talk about what what they could do to help people with HIV and AIDS. And uh, wow, in, in so our that area. was in 1991. 1991, yeah. It's been that long. It's yeah. fascinating to think about. I it, mean, that's... It, it, it it is. It it is. Uh, you know. What's that? 17, 18 right, years. Right. So, uh, so it's it's been a while. And hope is we were hope for the PD at that right, time. Got right. established as a nonprofit organization. Started receiving federal funds in 1997. Mm -hmm. uh, then I came on board in 2000. Right. Right. So that's a, a short history. But uh, have been our veterans in the state in providing care to people with HIV and AIDS. Oh, and yeah. and uh, we we 
feel like we've done an excellent job at that. We, we diversified in about every way we can within the HIV and AIDS field right. with some prevention money, prevention programs. We do all the care and support services. Pretty much anything that someone with HIV and AIDS could want or need, we're mm -hmm. there to either provide it or to help them figure out how to get it. Right. And then, uh, of course, the prevention aspect of our program serves the whole community. Sure. Uh, you know, this a few years back, we started uh, thinking about uh, community health center because there wasn't one in the city of Florence. It Is was that right because, in the entire yeah, city? Wow. Yeah, that, and, and, and community health centers are prevalent all around South Carolina and across the nation. Right. Uh, you have a couple here at the coast and, of course, Sumter, Columbia, Charleston, Hartsville, lots of places in South Carolina have them. But the city of Florence, and particularly inner city Florence, did not have a federally qualified health center. Okay. And so we saw that as an opportunity, and we took that opportunity to go ahead and apply for that grant. It was an arduous process. I got to tell you, that grant was one of the bigger ones we've ever done, but um, we're pleased that we were approved for the funding, and now we have the opportunity to uh, to provide health care to anybody who needs it. To anybody. That's that correct. is the significance of a federally, uh, of an That's FQHC. Right. FQHC yeah. stands yeah. for Fairly Qualified Health Center. And uh, now we, we're still very, of course, very proud of what we do with, uh, in the area of HIV and AIDS, and we don't want to lose that, and we don't plan on losing it. Right. But, uh, but you know, a lot of our a lot of our clients were, were coming in over the years, and they would say, you know, can I bring my, you know, my grandmother? Can oh, yeah. I bring my aunt? Uh, you know, or I live with my cousin, and yeah. and I, they're they they're sick too. You know, yeah. can I can I bring them in? And we weren't able to serve them because right. you know we were only funded to provide care for people with HIV and AIDS. Right. And uh, we started thinking about it. So, you know, this is something that Florence really needs. And, uh, and we went for it. So, that is tremendous. Yeah. And that's a big deal. How much of that is supported by federal dollars? Is that a big chunk of that? I mean, you all still need to go out and raise, Absolutely. raise dollars. Absolutely. You know, in the beginning, uh, the, the grant money's everything because it's all you have when you get started. Right, right. But uh, the federal government expects you to earn revenue as, as to be able to, uh, to to run the center. Right, sure. Uh, it's, it's a health care business. It's just like a, a family practice that you might go to, you know, sure. any, anywhere else. The, the difference between uh, FQHCs, the, health, the community health centers, and any other family practice in town, the major difference is we're obligated to serve anybody who comes in, regardless Anyone. of their ability to pay. Wow, yeah. that is tremendous. So, Carl. so, so, you know, we, uh, you know, that that's one of the things that makes us different, right. and that's one of the reasons why the government gives you the the grant funding and then the enhanced reimbursement on Medicaid. So, when we see a Medicaid patient, we get paid more than uh, a typical family practice. Right. And that's because we might serve 50 percent of the people that we serve, yeah. and that's typically about the ratio in South right. Carolina. Roughly half of the patients served in community health centers are not are, are without insurance, right. without health insurance. Right. So they come in and and we charge them based. It's not a free clinic. We try to distinguish ourselves from free clinics. They do all, awesome work in most cities. Right. Um, but we 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 stand beside them yeah. and partner with them because uh, what we do is when patients come in and they don't. Uh, we charge them based on a, a sliding fee scale. Okay. What that means is we take into account their mm -hmm. uh, their family size right. and their income, right. and then we come up with a fee. It could be as low in our center, it could be as low as ten dollars right. as a minimum wow. fee. Now, do you want so, people to find out about y'all, Carl, or do you want to be a little <laughs> hidden gem there? I mean, my God, this is tremendous. There's clearly got to be significant needs in the PD, and much like some of the tremendous nonprofit hospitals, whether it's McLeod or Conway yes. Medical down here, or a yes. ton of other Loras. Lots of great nonprofit institutions and even for profit institutions. You've got to juggle quite a bit there. But That's right. Do you want people to know you all are there? Because yeah. that is tremendous. Well, yes and no. Uh, only, no, only in the respect of uh, the new building, which, right, we, right. which we mentioned. Uh, we're, not in, we're not moved in yet. Right. But uh, yeah, we want, we want everyone in the community to know about us, and, and yeah. we'll take as many as we can now, but then we move into the new building. We can increase our providers, and we'll have 12 exam rooms as opposed to three or four now. You'll have 12 exam yeah. We're pretty much, I guess that's a four times. Uh, yeah, you're quadrupling, yeah, your, quadrupling uh, our, your actual our, ability, our to, ability serve. to serve patients. So, that's tremendous, Carl. So that's, we'll be ready soon. We're ready now. We want folks to call us if they need health care. Right. Uh, but we're going to do more uh, advertising, I guess, when that time comes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a 
community health centers are a hidden gem in and of themselves. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised at how many people do not know this movement that started in uh, the 60s. I think it was 1964 right. with the Economic uh, uh, Development Act of 1964. And, and since then, community health centers have, have grown and expanded. I think there are a thousand... I want to get this right, a 1,000 centers with 3,000 sites, because some centers have right. more than one site. Have a couple of satellites, and, yeah. Uh, and, and several years ago, I think it was 2001, uh, President Bush had a, an expansion initiative really? for health centers. And he said in his State of, State of the Union address and, and part of this initiative, he wanted to see 1,200 new, new sites, new centers. Really? That's right. And uh, we were part of that expansion. That, right. That's what we, we got in right after that. And, decided to apply and I think last year they they did the ribbon cutting for the 1200th center as wow. part of that initiative over that and, seven uh, six seven year period yeah, that's from right to that's then. right that's tremendous yeah that's right Golly so they God. are we are we are a hidden gem I think in, in across South Carolina and a lot of folks getting people without health insurance I think it was 125 between 125 and 150 thousand folks that will without health insurance that will get primary health care, quality primary health care from, from our centers uh, th throughout this year. The, uh, throughout, throughout the, the state. country. No, just, the, throughout just, the state. just in South Carolina. 135,000 to 150,000 folks yeah, uninsured. that are uninsured. That doesn't count all the folks with Medicaid and Medicare and other insurance that we, that we treat. Wow. Because anybody can come to us for health care. And we found that lots of folks that have insurance want to come to our center because they... Uh, you know, they, they're not, not having a good experience at the doctor at now, or maybe right. the wait times are too long, or that type of thing, and we can, we can get them in there. That so. is amazing, Carl. I, can't, yeah. I mean, I just can't even quite <laughs> fathom this. I know you mentioned earlier this morning that we've got a community health center in Conway. Yes. One in Little River. That's There's correct. probably one down in Georgetown, somewhere yes. in the county. Mm -hmm. So there are clearly, these are hidden gems. Yes. That, but the idea that someone that has insurance could actually go in there Absolutely. is mind-blowing. The idea that um, you all just have to go through some basic steps on income and family size to determine what their rate's going to be. That's right. Is mind That's, right. That's tremendous. And you know, most centers have that down to an art. You come in, yeah. well, you do have to bring uh, it's a government-funded right. organization, so you do have sure. to bring certain documents with sure. you. And uh, but it's, we don't make the, the that step complicated. Right. And we just, you know, like you just described, put it on the sliding fee scale and tell you, you know, it's right. going to be ten dollars or twenty dollars. That's great, whatever. Carl. I'm mm -hmm. sure viewers would want to learn more about that. And may need to get off to work now or get family yeah, out of the house. Please call What's us. the best phone number to call? And is there a website they could visit to go sure. over some? frequently asked questions or some common things they may want to know about Hope Health. Sure. I can call our general number would be the best way, which is uh, area code 843-667-9414. Right. Okay. So 667-9414. Right. Good.